Hello everyone! Today we'll show the Bolin DC9 4K camera and the integration with the PVC Extreme controller from Skahoy. Now this camera is really amazing on the specs. It's the 4K camera with a 1 inch CMOS sensor and that makes it ideal for broadcast TV, video conferencing, houses of worship, live sports and large auditoriums. So this camera has different outputs, both streaming and SDI, HDMI outputs on the backside. One of the cool things is that apart from the 6G SDI and the 4K HDMI inputs, 4K IP inputs, not only are they in different um, formats like uh, SDI and HDMI and, and streaming, but you can also have different formats on each of them. So for instance, you can have HD, uh, HD signal coming out on the stream and then keep 4K on, on the HDMI and so on. So that's one of the things that you find on the backside on, on this one. It's connected to the PDC Extreme and that is the flagship PDC controller from Skahoy. Now you can uh, look at how many nice features this has to offer broadcast professionals. One of the things you notice is the zoom rocker over here. This is a custom component from Skaha. You also have a thumb roller wheel that sits at the perfect location for adjusting focus with your thumb. And this knob, the iris dial, is usually mapped to iris. When I say usual, it is because if you are um, with us for, us for a long time, you know that every one of these components can be mapped to individual parameters. So if you want the iris knob to be for iris. That is really up to you because you can also assign it to something different that matters most to you. But in the default configuration coming with this camera, this is usually how we map it. Focus, zoom control and iris. By the way, talking about the zoom rocker for zoom control, what if you had your camera on a slider on a dolly track that was motorized? You could map the zoom rocker to actually move the camera on the dolly instead of the focus because on the Hall Effect joystick you have rotation on the joystick that will make the camera zoom. In this configuration we do both. Now look at the picture from the camera just to get this point through to you. You see that I'm turning the joystick so we see a zoom of the camera but at the same time I could also use the zoom rug over here and you see the same effect. I can zoom back again of course and I could also use the joystick by rotating. So there you have redundancy. If you like that or not it's up to you. You could map it differently. You could disconnect it on the joystick to not have it there only on zoom rug and so on. That is the basic deliverable of a PDC controller. That's pan tilt and zoom movement. So of course we can also move the joystick um, to uh, the left and the right side to adjust the uh, pan and tilt um, like you see here. And um, if you look at the basic layout of the controller on the lower row of buttons we have camera selection and um, it is set up to seven cameras. By the way notice all the OLED displays. These give you flexibility. If you want your camera selector elsewhere you can easily do that. We even have additional five buttons not assigned to anything yet but if we assign functionality you would see the display show what is the function of the keys. It's if you had only four bowling cameras on your uh, setup then you would probably want to just uh, remove camera selector uh, five six and seven to use those keys with the displays and a different color coding for something else. That's entirely up to you and that's the power of the Skahoy products. But today we have only one camera so there's only one showing up here. But the next row is typically assigned to preset selection. Again the OLED displays are amazing. In this case they, they just show the number of the preset being the same as the fixed label on the key for a preset number. But you can actually type in labels to, sh to be shown in the displays if you want to. You can do that in the web interface of the controller. Today we have actually four banks of 10 presets set up for this one. And on the keys over here you see a nice little graphic that show that if you press the upper and lower edge you will toggle between having access to presets 11 up to uh, 20 and then if I press the upper edge of the key I'm back to 1 to 10. If I press the lower edge here I am accessing 31 up to 40 and on the upper edge it's um, 21 up to 30. Uh, pressing here we are now back at 1 to 10. So that is four way buttons detecting edge presses. Again it's the signature feature of Skahoy controllers and you see up to 40 banks of preset recall. They could all be labeled if we wanted to do that. Uh, let's just try and make a preset. Now we'll just zoom in on a part of the picture here. So um, moving over here just zooming in on the Skahoy booklet and this nice uh, couple of uh, Chinese clay dolls. 
Um, it seems to be out of focus a little bit. Okay, let's see if we can uh, fix that. Maybe the camera is a little bit too close today because it is an autofocus. So we'll have to, to do with this, but let's press this button. Number two, press and hold it until it turns out to be green and we have now stored a preset. I now recall preset on number one, which I did before this recording and now I press number two and it goes back to this preset. So this is also to be expected, I would say. So, a great camera like this one has so many things we can do inside and I want to show you some of that. There's a reason why we picked PTC uh, Extreme. This controller gives you direct access to so much because it has a large number of buttons and knobs and you can assign functionality so that you don't have to go deep into a menu to, to un unpack it. You can uh, access it very directly on this controller. I'm saying that because we have other controllers like PVC Fly and PVC Pro and they are smaller, they have less buttons, they can actually do the same, also work with this camera. It's not like you couldn't adjust uh, the matrix dimensions in the Bolin camera from a PVC Fly, you can, but you just need to get to that point by cycling through some, some menus. On the PVC Extreme you have direct control which is great for broadcast professionals who need that. And let's look at what is in the, uh, the knobs assigned to this camera. So if I press the first one, you can basically assume this is like a little menu selector with one press on each of these giving you access to various parts of the adjustments you want to do in a camera like this. The first one gives you access to exposure parameters like um, setting the exposure mode and it's currently in, in auto, now it's on manual. I, I turn it over to shutter, I'm now at iris, I have gain priority mode and each time I change the mode, you see that there are adjustments coming along with that. In gain mode, I cannot adjust iris and shutter speed. Um, the LED ring behind the encoder is shut off, but I can adjust the gain. So you see gain priority, I'm now uh, able to, to do that. Uh, since it is seeking to have an automatic exposure here, the consequence of turning up the gain is that the camera is gonna change the shutter speed and quite neatly you see the shutter speed is actually reported back to the controller so you see what the camera decides to do to hit the same level of exposure when we change the gain parameter. It goes up to 100 of a second. So I can reduce the gain again, we'll see the shutter speed is, and the iris in combination are reported differently. By the way, this camera is so advanced that um, if we, I think if I press once again, yeah, you see there are so many parameters associated with uh, exposure that not even having eight encoders is really enough, but we coded this button to be a toggle button. So repeated presses give you access to additional things. You see it in the displays changing as I, I toggle now. So just quickly glancing at what we see here, in the second layer of the exposure menu, you see max and minimum shutter speeds, which is a way for you to, to limit what ranges the shutter speed is allowed to, to uh, be inside when it is in automatic mode. Also, you see gain limit here and gain point. Um, so let me see, were we not in gain mode here? No, that's actually in the other case. So minimum and maximum shutter speed makes sense in this case. Let's just turn this down and say, okay, I don't want the shutter speed to go above 60 and it shouldn't go below 130. Okay, so if I go back here and I turn up the gain, I would expect that shutter speed goes up to 60, but the rest is compensated for by iris. And that is exactly what I see. Again, amazing camera block inside this bowling camera with a lot of features for professionals. So that's exciting in and of itself. So um, in the other modes, you can see that uh, we would have the same kind of thing going for gain, where you can set a limit for gain that, that basically sets where do you want iris to take over if it's in iris, uh, sorry, uh, shut up priority and it balances those things off. Let's move on and look at what white balance can offer us. So in white balance menu, we have again the mode on the first key here, indoor, outdoor, one push, auto white, uh, tracking white balance, manual mode, outdoor one and two and some um, other modes uh, down here. If I have it in manual mode, I have a classic red and blue gain. Those two you'll see in a lot of PTC cameras, um, a lot of Visca cameras, because this is the Visca protocol, Visca over IP, and uh, they, are, they are seen across the board. But you also see other more advanced things, like you have white balance offset that can kind of, um, in, in uh, the auto mode, it can uh, tip your, your 
white balance a little bit to one or the other side. You can also um, set the speed by which the white balance is trying to accommodate to a new environment. So those are not always found. Again, a testimony to this being a quite advanced camera. If we want to move on, we can see that we have layers and layers of professional features. One of them, matrix adjustment, where you can adjust the dimensions between red, green, red, blue, green, red, green, blue, and so forth. Again, uh, to have the final dimension in here, we uh, have a, a toggle function that gives us access to uh, the, the blue, red dimension on the last key. We also have color hue and color gain here and standard matrix that we can change between a number of different modes. We are currently in standard here, but we have this one, I think, um, whatever saturation, I'm not sure what the H is for. Um, I'm not even sure what this is, uh, F-light, fluorescent light, I'm not sure. Uh, honestly, uh, that is what you look for in the manual. And why am I saying that? Because if you took the manual for the Boland camera up from the box it came in, you would discover that all these things that you see on the Skyhoy controller is actually specifically um, documented in the manual. So you can read about all these many advanced settings in the manual and what it does in which cases and so on and trust your Skaho equipment to interact with those parameters. If we go to details, we also see a um, lot of nice features here. Uh, the level of detail, this is typically sharpness uh, related settings. Um, the mode of detail, again, um, auto and manual mode here. Um, bandwidth, low, high, medium, default, crispening, um, various types of balancing and so forth. If we go to gamma mode, uh, we have other settings. Uh, one of them that definitely has an impact is changing the gamma mode here. You can see that on the output of the picture. So quite clearly, this is uh, one setting that um, you can use to, yeah, to get whatever type of gamma that you uh, prefer. Um, again, some offset parameters related to gamma, and then you see a number of parameters related to the black level of your picture. So that is uh, kind of a neat, and one of the things that this camera is really good at, that is to, uh, to work with the black level of the uh, picture. You have black gamma range, black level, black gamma level, and so forth. Once again, I would consult the manual to understand the, the true difference of these things. Uh, in the image menu, uh, you have a number of things here. I, yeah, ND filter, for instance, if um, that, that's actually mechanically changing in the camera. I can hear that when I turn this knob. And uh, image flip, uh, teleconvert. Image flip would turn the image around, obviously. Uh, you can enable on and off digital zoom and so forth. Now, uh, and the system menu is really just Skahoy stuff like IP address and uh, panel brightness. So I can turn up the brightness a little bit. This works better on video typically. So you see things more clearly now. And um, let's move on to the on-screen menu as the final thing. Because even though you would say, why would that be necessary? Since, hey, your Skahoy controller has everything already on the controller. So one of the, the tricks is that you may not want to put everything onto the controller. So even though we have like 95 plus percent of what this camera does available on knobs and buttons, maybe you filtered some of that out because you don't think that this is really necessary or even a good idea to give to your users. But having access to the on-screen menu in case you need to go and set some kind of parameter, you can actually do that. So I just brought it up, as you can see, uh, and I can now navigate the menu. There's a key just next to here, which will bring my cursor up and down this list. I can then right click. Again, this is a four way button. So uh, going right on the button allows me to, uh, to, to go and find some parameter and I can adjust it. Now I have this HV balance, which I remember that we had on some of the other menus here. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's right here. Um, is it not? I think, okay, I better get back to, am I still navigating? I'm changing some value. Unfortunately, I can't see it really, really uh, good, but it changes here on my controller. And that was the point of uh, showing you this, that the controller is in communication with the camera and it's gonna pull that value back that I'm adjusting in the on-screen menu and showing on the display on the controller here. I am going back to my, uh, uh, yeah, so you can see I can navigate, I can change things. I'm now cycling back to exit my on-screen menu. 
And um, the final thing that I just wanted to say is that apart from that main thing, we have a few buttons on the PDC Extreme in the upper right, sorry, left corner that has uh, direct access to typically things like exposure mode, auto manual, you can uh, uh, toggle on a button like this, you can toggle focus mode, auto manual, and uh, you can also, if you press this one, get speed limitation on these two buttons. So that is basically toggling availability of a speed limit for pan tilt and zoom and speed limit for the focus wheel here. You can adjust that on these knobs in this corner. So guys, that completes our walkthrough of the PTC Extreme with the Bolin DC9 camera. And if you want to know more about how Unisketch can be set up to do all this interaction, please consult our YouTube videos, go to our websites, uh, you can ask our support if you want. Follow us on social media if you want to stay up to date on new development. Every week we push out new things that our controllers can do. It's just a firmware upgrade away. And this is how Skyhoy works. Your controller becomes more and more valuable every day because we are all the time adding new features in software to control the new cameras and broadcast equipment that is out there. Thanks for watching and uh, come again for other videos about PDC cameras and other integrations from Skyhoy.